In today's news, a party on campus attracts over 1,000 students. Hi Amanda, I'm John Fastell and I'm right in front of SIU, where Tropical is going on tonight. Trinity football pulls out a huge win against its rival, Williams College. Will Goldshaw here with Coach Jeff Devaney following their 40th straight win here on Jesse Miller Field. Two Trinity sophomores found themselves dancing on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, and we sat down with Dean Alford. Do you believe the drinking age should be changed to 18? Well, I don't know that there's a, that there's a perfect age for it. I, I think that drinking's an adult activity. Live from Hartford, Connecticut, this is Trin TV News 2 at 7 p.m. Hello, Trinity College. This is Amanda Ward reporting for Trin TV News 2. This year's Tropical lived up to the hype once again with close to 1,000 students in the backyard of SIU this past Saturday night. Tropical is easily considered one of the main highlights of the fall semester here on campus, and John Pastel was at the party. Let's take a look. Hi Amanda, I'm John Pastel, and I'm right in front of SIU, where Tropical is going on tonight. The band Hyper Crush is in town, and over a thousand partygoers are in attendance. We've talked to a couple of them. I'm all ready to go to over to Tropical. It's going to be a good time. You know, good, clean, sober fun. Nothing better than Trinity College. Do you know what you're going to do at Tropical? Probably going to grind with some girls, you know, get a, little, get a little wild. What are you planning to do when you get into Tropical? Lose my mind. Excellent. Yeah. Are you having a good time? I am a little cold, Slow but having a good time. <laughs> it's not very tropical out here, but I'm having a good time. It's really fun, actually. So, do you have any specific plans for Tropical? I just really want, like to warm up I a plan little bit. on going <laughs> back in there a little bit. Do you have any plans for later? Yes. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much fun do you think you're going to have? I like turtles. <laughs> that is a great answer. So what are you doing now? So for this event, we are selling grilled items, burgers, hot dogs, pizza, and it's all for a great cause. We chose a great night. It's all for your charity. As you can see, a lot of people are having a lot of fun going to Tropical, and they also seem to have some goals in mind. Which is always a good thing. It's good to have ambition. So John, do you have any goals for the night? The answer is yes. Back to you, Amanda. Looks like our reporter John had a little too much fun last night. But Tropical wasn't the only celebration we had this weekend. The Trinity College Bantams beat Williams 21-13. to Team 2 reporter Will Goldshaw was at the game. Take it away, Goldshaw. Will Goldshaw here with Coach Jeff Devaney following their 40th straight win here on Jesse Miller Field. Coach Devaney, uh, you picked up where Coach Priori left off six years ago, but you've been on staff since the beginning of this back in 2001 when there was grass field here. How does it feel to be the man in charge at the turn of the milestone? Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I love running this program. I'm a Trinity alum, and it's real special to me being the head coach of the football program. Chuck Priori did a great job here of getting the program where it you know, to a place where it wasn't when he took over. And uh, I'm just happy that we've been able to continue the, that momentum. And you're a busy guy, so we'll make it quick. Change of role for Headley Jennings in a three running back system that, is, that with the exception of Dante Ostheimer, for the most part, you ran today. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you Michael Vickifying him, so to speak? He, he ran the ball a whole lot less than we saw last season, and I know for a fact that you're going to look to him to go to the air a lot more than in the past. He, he's growing into more of a quarterback than just a runner. Last year we used him as just a runner. Right. He's really he's really matured a lot as a quarterback. I thought some of the things he did today, throwing the ball out of bounds, you know, are things that he's that's ta he's taken that step that he, a year ago he probably would have thrown the ball up in the middle of the field and tried to make something happen. So he's really growing and maturing as a quarterback. Um, Coach Devaney said doesn't really matter a whole lot. But what was the actual locker room mentality on the idea of coming up on 40 straight here on Jesse Miller? Was it taboo? Was it openly spoken of? Or did you guys just have more important stuff to think about? <laughs> no poop in the coop, baby. That's what it's all about. We, we knew we weren't going to come out here and lose. We worked too hard. And uh, O-line came out today, gave me plenty of time. They played great. Uh, receivers got open downfield. And uh, we, we just made it happen. Headley, congratulations on Thank win number 40. Much. It's a big milestone for the program. Good Thank luck. You very much. Have a nice Saturday now. 21 yeah. 13, Bantams over Williams today. Come back next week, Hamilton College, down for a visit. Go Bants. 
Over the past few years, students here on campus have had mixed emotions about an anonymous confession board website called TrinTalk. With the founder of the website recently graduated, TrinTalk is no longer accessible to Trinity students. Let's go down to Mather Dining Hall where our Team 2 reporter Dee Dee finds out how the campus feels about the recent disappearance of TrinTalk. Hi Amanda, on this beautiful day we are taking a few interviews with students at Matter Hall trying to find out what the general opinion about the disappearance of TrinTalk is. Wait, TrinTalk is gone? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what to... I don't know what to feel about it. But, like, it was all negative. It was just like negative entertainment, I guess. I don't know. We, I've been on it once. My friend was on it. They had a, they had a thread about my friend named Peter. Awesome. And uh, it was funny to read about him because they would say funny stuff about him and we would laugh at him. <laughs> Probably a bad idea to bring Trim Dog back. Um, for me personally, I know the football team already has its own version of that. So it's not really necessary for us. We're bagging on each other all the time. So. In my opinion, I think we really should have like a blog. You know, there's lots of students out here. They have lots of stuff on their minds. They want to get it off their chest. Most times they might talk to their friends about it and most times they might not really be understood. So they just want to get it out and see if there's other people, you know, on campus who probably think the same thing. So I think a blog is like the best way to, to get it out, you know. Schools, institutions like Trinity should have blogs if the, the blog is designed at allowing, allowing kids to critique the place they're in and not individuals. Because there shouldn't be a forum where you're allowed to talk trash about people. I think that if they want to criticize a school, that could be a good call, but I really think that a lot of people could, it, it could have a very negative outcome. Never, okay. never heard of it until right it now. Before. But we but should have it back. What's up, Bacio? What the hell? So Amanda, as you can see, most people are concerned that bringing Trin Talk back will be hurtful to individuals as you can post anything anonymously. In general, I don't think Trin Talk will be missed. Back to you. Thanks, Dee Dee. Earlier this week, we checked in with Dean Alford regarding his vision for the new school year. Let's go down to Team 2 reporter Chloe who conducted the interview. So in the first three weeks of school, there's been some incidents of harassment and all of the students have gotten emails from your office. So uh, Trin TV was interested in finding out more about that, so we're here to talk to you today. Okay, great. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be, be here with you. Can you tell us um, about the harassment policy at the school? I can. Um, the, the college is obviously um, very concerned about harassment. We have a, a strong policy outlawing it. Uh, this past summer, at the request of the Campus Climate Committee, which in fact was really directed from a, a set of requests, demands really, from students last spring, that the college fortify its uh, harassment policy and make a much stronger statement about our um, um, antipathy for for acts of harassment but to be very specific targeted acts of harassment against another person are not permissible at this campus and um, uh, it, it can be tricky because there are times harassment is very often verbal um, we're a community that that values freedom of speech, freedom of expression. We're very tolerant of a wide range of uh, language, of art, um, of ideas. But when it becomes targeted, when it is aimed at hurting another individual or demeaning that person or group of people, um, it's, it, it's terrible for the, the quality of life in this community. Do you think the frats are a positive addition to Trinity climate? Well, that's a good question. I, um, ultimately, I'm going to probably dance on both sides. I think there's some positive things they bring to this campus community. Um, at their best, they provide a social life that does um, uh, appeal to a, a, a an, a number of Trinity students. Um, I think they provide, again at their best, a, a good experience, leadership experience for some of their members. Um, I think they're, uh, they've got a long history of self-management and I think that the opportunities that, that come along with running your own house, running your organization, do provide uh, good, good educational experiences. Um, 
it's funny that you're even asking the question because I can imagine that 10 years ago people would be wondering why you even dared ask such a question. Um, I think we all know that that at their at their worst um, fraternities and sororities can sometimes limit the number of friendships one has. I think they have deeper friendships very close but um, but I wonder at times whether it's with a narrower band of friends than might otherwise be the case. Um, and they also are when their social life is excessive I think that creates a very, um, uh, that, that, that doesn't contribute to a better image. Um, so I'm, I'm of mixed opinion. In other news, one of my absolute favorite groups here on campus is also one of the most underrated. Sarah Mead snuck into the Trinity College Dance Company's most recent rehearsal. Hi Amanda, I'm here at Trinity Commons where the Trinity Dance Company is finishing up practicing. The Trinity Dance Company is truly a hidden gem on campus full of talent and I got to sit down with a few of the members. The Trinity Dance Company practices at Trinity Commons every Sunday at 3 o'clock where they rehearse for their upcoming performances. So Kira, why did you decide to join the Trinity Dance Company? So when I came in as a freshman, I was looking for opportunities to dance outside of the classes that Trinity offers. Um, the Trinity Dance Company performs several times during the year, and they rehearse three times a week, and it's just a fun opportunity to just hang out with the girls and <laughs> get to dance, so yeah. I decided to join the Trinity Dance Company because I heard a lot of great things about it, and um, it definitely gave me an opportunity to meet some new people and have a good group of girls to know on campus, and also because they're all amazing dancers, so it's really great to be a part of it. Sarah, how rigorous is the commitment to being a part of the company? Um, although we do have a lot of fun, we are very dedicated. We practice three times a week, including Sunday mornings like this, where it may not be the most thing that you want to do, get out of bed this early. But um, we do spend a lot of time just to make sure that we're as best as we can be. And so it is kind of a big commitment, I would say. Amanda, why should somebody join the Trinity College Dance Company? Um, someone should join the Trilly College Dance Company if they just love to do all types of dance. We choreograph in jazz, lyrical, tap, ballet, and we really try to provide a wide variety of dance style to the campus. Um, we also are just very dedicated. We have a lot of fun, and it's just a great group of girls to be a part of. We really love dance, and we're excited to perform in department shows. We put on our own show every year, so there's a lot of opportunity with us to perform on campus. So as you can see, these girls are clearly very very passionate about what they do and I think we can expect some great things from the Trinity College Dance Company this year. Thank you Sarah, they sure are talented. Did you get any dance practice in yourself? I left the dancing up to them but it sure looked fun to be a part of. There's been a big buzz about Trinity sophomores and best friends Rachel Burke and Christina Smithy who made a memorable appearance dancing on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon just last week. Let's check in with the duo and see what they have to say about their experience teaching Jimmy Fallon how to dance. So how was being on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon? It was awesome. It was a fabulous experience. Oh my gosh. It was very surreal. Quite an experience. Were you super nervous before you got there? Mm, maybe before, before we, we were there. Before, once we were on our way there, we were nervous. We were very nervous. Yes. But our, um, our driver, you know, talked us through it and just explained what we were going to yeah. do. And really knew the deets. Yeah, he knew the details. So you had a driver, so you got driven to the show? Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we got picked up in front of our dorm and driven to NBC by one of the drivers, the NBC drivers. And that was amazing. It was, it was fabulous. And then, uh, but we, when we were actually on the show, it wasn't too nerve-wracking because we got to hang out with all the writers and Jimmy backstage and stuff, so we felt really comfortable. And wow. They were all super nice, too. Yeah. And the Roots, of course. They're very nice and made us feel very at home. <laughs> 
Um, did you plan what you were going to do before you were actually on the show? Mm -hmm. Not really. They just, we had rehearsal and then they kind of asked us questions and we like answered them and he's like, it's going to be basically the same, so we just kind of went with it. It's awesome. Yeah, we did one, one run through before with mics and everything, um, sort of a dress rehearsal and then we did the actual show, but um, so we were prepared on what questions would be asked sort of thing, but Jimmy does a lot of improv, so some of it was new. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was a star on the show that night? Who was that? <clears throat> there were several, actually. A couple. Um, couple. Taylor Lautner, mm. uh, Florence Henderson, who's Carol Brady from The Brady Bunch, and uh, Giada De Laurentiis, who's a Food Network chef. Oh, wow. And Alec Baldwin did a walk-on appearance. Right. So we saw him. So. Yeah, he did a cameo. Yeah, we got so to did see you get him. to hang out with the stars and talk to them? Yeah, they were all super nice backstage. Like, we were all kind of like hanging out together. Do you have any final words to say to Trinity about the Nug dance? You know, just uh, keep nugging. Keep nugging. Keep nugging. Uh, live, laugh, nug. Live, laugh, nug. I like um, that one. Too. Yeah, peace, <laughs> peace, love, and nuggets. Peace, love, and nuggets. Yeah. Great. That's about All it. All right, well, back to you. Well, that does it for Trin TV News 2. Special thanks to everyone who participated in this week's newscast. Tune in next week where we interview the SGA president who talks about everything from Bistro Pub Night to the recent discriminating acts on campus. We will also be highlighting senior entrepreneurs who designed a website that helps you kick cash around campus. And finally, our team talks to Professor Younger and Professor Polin about the new film initiative here at Trinity. You can see all that and more when we return October 13th at 7 p.m. I'm Amanda Ward, and that's the news today.